can strategize how to conquer this struggle that we all fall into sometimes. Okay, so it says the power of sleep, why it's so important and how to get more of it. If you're eating and exercise are on point, but you still don't feel or look the way you want, poor sleep may be to blame. Here's how to make rest a daily priority. So if you look over here, um, we have five signs your sleep habits aren't working for you. So the first one is your mind is foggy. What we experience and learn gets cemented to memory while we sleep. Interference with this process causes reduced alertness and concentration, confusion, impaired judgment, and forgetfulness. So for this one, I kind of thought to myself, like, I don't know, have you, like when y'all are in school or if y'all are in school, did you ever try to like study for a test? And then you're like trying to memorize and memorize, but it's late at night. And then you're just like frustrated. You can't memorize anything. And then all of a sudden you go to bed, you wake up the next day and you study again. And all of a sudden you remember everything because you got that sleep. So this kind of like relates to that in a way is just like with the proper sleep, your brain is able to um, process everything from the day before. So without that sleep, it's kind of like your brain is, is in a fog. It's just kind of stuck. And it goes the same way with your workouts too. So if you're not getting the proper sleep, your muscles are not going to have time to recover from what you did previously. So it's, it's, it's almost like, it's not a waste of a workout, but it's like detrimental to your progress. It's going to slow it down a lot. Like, whereas if you were to get seven hours of sleep, it's going to accelerate your results and also make you feel better. Okay. So the next one is you're getting sick a lot. So when we don't sleep enough, T cells go down and inflammation goes up, resulting in increased vulnerability to viruses and bacteria, acute increase in risk of getting sick increased risk, risk of heart disease and other inflammation related illnesses. So again, if you're not sleeping, if you're not getting the proper amount of sleep, your body is just not able to function hundred percent. And so I, I feel like this kind of messes with your immune system as well. Lack of sleep can affect your immune system and how often you're getting sick or, or just your health in general. Um, okay. So your workouts feel too hard. Our body uses sleep as an opportunity to refresh neurotransmitter levels and remove energy draining metab metabolites. Otherwise we experience decreased central nervous system activity, slower reaction time, low energy and endurance capacity, depressed mood, reduced desire to exercise. So I don't know about y'all, but when you're lacking sleep, does anybody else experience like not good workouts? <laughs> like for me, if I am, um, if I had a night where I could only get four to six hours of sleep and then I go to the gym the next day, it's extremely hard for me to get through my workout. And I just, sometimes I just want to skip it. Like, I just don't feel like working out. Type, type one if you notice that. If you notice that your workout kind of sucks after you, if you haven't gotten enough sleep. Type two, if you haven't <laughs> noticed that. <laughs> I feel like I have felt that I felt that on Monday, like really bad. I was dragging and I noticed like I, the way I was doing the week before I couldn't do it that day. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, completely. Yep. Okay. Um, so next one is you're unhappy. While we sleep, we produce stress neurotransmitters and regulate hormone production. Interference here causes impaired regulation of emotions, heightened stress, low mood, possible increase in risk of depression. So again, they mentioned depression twice on here, which I mean, to me, that's kind of impactful. So I don't know, um, like your sleep highly, 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 I mean, it affects your mind, but it highly affects your moods. It affects your ability of judgment. It affects being able to like experience joy throughout your day. It's almost just like a weight because you're just so tired. You're just not functioning hundred percent. So that's something to really think about whenever we think about getting the full amount of sleep that our bodies need. And then the last one that it says here is that you're struggling with your weight. So poor sleep is linked to excess body fat as it can disrupt appetite regulation, cause you to feel hungrier, lead to increased calorie intake. Also excess body fat can reduce sleep quality. Um, 
So yeah, so I mean, again, it, it just kind of all correlates. If you're not sleeping, your, your mind's not working 100%, your body's not functioning 100%, your immune system is lacking, you're unhappy, like all these things just pile up. And of course, I feel like these are all stressful situations that you're putting on your body. And as we all know, stress is a real thing and it can affect you physically. And one of the biggest side effects of stress is, is um, either not losing weight or gaining weight even. Okay. Um, so now we're gonna look at the positives. Now we know all of these five signs of sleep habits that aren't working for you. We know, we understand that. So now we're gonna look at uh, tips for better sleep. Okay, so the first one that we have is turn off electronics. How many of you type one in the chat if you are on your phone, glued to your phone until the, until the moment you fall asleep? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, here's the chat. Sorry, I couldn't find it. There it is. <laughs> it's oh, me. A couple people are direct messaging me. So just make sure y'all are putting it to everyone in meeting because a couple people accidentally, I think, selected, like, replied to me instead. But yeah, I, we, a, a couple people sent me ones. So yes, yeah, we're all kind so, of. Yes. So I understand, like, these phones are addicting and it's so hard to get off social media or texting or whatever it is but it's really like sometimes we even include this in our routine but we don't realize that electronics can be affecting our sleep so this says remove your eyes from all devices at least 30 minutes before bed artificial light interferes with our production of melatonin which ensures deep sleep and may help regulate metabolism so that's very interesting um so I don't know if you noticed, but well, for me, like on my phone, I actually take off the blue light on my phone. I don't know if anybody else does that, but I've noticed that since I've done that, especially at night, they have, they even have like an option that's like turn on sleep mode. I think of what is what it is. And it just, it goes to like night mode, but it's just taking off the blue light on your phone. There, it's easier on your eyes. There's a way to put it in your settings where you can put your night shift to turn on at a certain time. So I think it's in the screen part of settings, but I have mine where at 10 PM, it automatically goes into night shift and it takes the blue light out. So if anyone, I can put it in the chat or something like what buttons to press, but you can set it where it's automatic. Yeah, it actually makes a huge difference because when I turned mine off, all of a sudden I realized like my eyes weren't straining as much, which is so crazy to think that a blue light does that. But, you know, if it, if it does that, and then it's also saying here that it um, interferes with our production of melatonin, which is basically, um, I believe that's the hormone that, that produces while, you know, to get you to sleep. Um, so, you know, 30 minutes before bed, maybe, maybe set a reminder, like maybe do what Anna said and have it go to night mode. And then, you know, like maybe set a timer after that. Okay. Maybe 15 minutes, 15 more minutes before I need to shut this off. And I need to like, this is my reminder to go to bed. Like my blue light turned off, you know, it's time. <laughs> um, yeah. And then. Okay, so the next one is going to be de-stress. So this one we kind of talked about earlier, but this is this is a really a really good one. So it says reading, meditation, and gentle movement. I'm laughing at what they put in the examples here because it says stretching, yoga, walking, and sex. Like of course. <laughs> um, and it says this can all release tension and activate calm down chemicals. So um, has any of you ever tried meditation before bed, like a guided meditation? So if you have, type one in the chat. Also, meditation is really great. I like I never really got into the idea of meditation until recently. It, I have seen a lot of benefits from it with myself, but also with my clients. Meditating can be great uh, for reducing stress and anxiety. So whenever you're experiencing the most, so like Tabby, you you're stressing out before bed a lot, like wondering about, you know, like the kids health. So you meditating before bed might be a really great way to kind of calm your mind down. There's another client of mine who is, has been feeling a lot of anxiety before working out. So I told her like, before you work out 10 minutes in your car, follow this meditation. So 
Um, if anyone wants to try meditating, sorry, sorry, Sarah, I just like took over. Go first. ahead. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone wants to try meditating regularly, um, that'll probably be our challenge for today. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna ask y'all to like put any of the things that you're going to try to you know put into your schedule and put into your regimen. Um, but if you need accountability, let us know and we can actually assign you habits so we can put like nightly meditation or something like that in your program. So you're able to check it off every day too. So. Yes. Yes. Um, Mary is one of my clients and we actually just got her, uh, started on diaphragmatic breathing, which I believe is a little bit, it's kind of a form of meditation. So I set a habit for her to do it like five minutes a day. It and is. Mary, it do is. You, do you want to like talk about your experience with that? At least the past week that you've been doing it? Well, the only thing I, I can say is that don't try when you wake up because you will fell back to sleep <laughs> um but after that uh it definitely relaxed me especially going before work because it's dreadful to go to work um so it relaxed me uh you have to basically you know control if you're breathing through you know, like your you know your belly move instead of your chest uh and you kind of like putting your mind on it concentrating and making sure that's happening and it kind of calms me down like i i see a lot of difference me myself I'm always yeah. stressed. So I see myself like more calm my way to work and stuff like that. It, it helps. Yeah, it's definitely. Also through workout too. Like you told me what's going to help me do. I, it's been helping me actually. It's kind of weird Good. because you feel like, is that really happening? But it is. Yes. So like for her, we kind of set um, a breathing regimen, practice diaphragmatic breathing, which is also in the meditation. It really focuses on your breath and focusing on getting everything else out of your mind and just focusing on your breath and your body and um, everything like that. So I kind of, if, if y'all don't know really like where to start on meditation, um, I have done, there's an app called insight timer. That is a meditation app. That's really good. Um, which I'll write that in here. And then there's also like YouTube. If you just write sleep guided meditation, there's a million on there. My personal favorites mm -hmm. that I do, like if I can't sleep is abide app or I, I listen to it on YouTube, but it's a Christian, um, like as a Christian guided meditation. So it kind of tells you Bible stories or, or it'll like have go through a prayer with you. And that just, for, it just really calms me down. So I'll just write those in the chat. Yeah, I love it. Yes. Um, but I am a big advocate on meditation because it, it really helps improve my sleep the past year. So then we have, all right, let's move on. So take a bath or a shower. Warm water can help us relax and de-stress. Throw in some magnesium-based Epsom salts known to help with sleep. Oh, I miss taking baths. I just have a shower at my house, but baths do help de-stress a lot. So um, I don't know if, if you'll take a shower bath at night, but that warm water really does help you relax and just, it's, it's good to incorporate in your routine unless you take them in the morning, whatever. But Next one is um, create a relaxing sleep area. Your bedroom should be quiet, peaceful, relatively organized, and free of anxiety-induced clutter. If you live in an urban area, consider a white noise machine to drown out city sounds. Um, so I personally, I think I sleep 100 times better when my room is clean. So if I have like, if I like get my laundry out and then I just leave it, oh my gosh, I get so stressed out, like in the morning and even at night, like it just unconsciously, it, it's like my body knows <laughs> and it's like, you got stuff to do. That's kind of what it is. So maybe making it a priority, like, you know, a few times a week to just, just clean up the stuff off your floor. Like just you make it, make it look nice. And, and it feels refreshing to do, to do that. Um, this is kind of, I started, I got like a, a light that projects like the stars it looks like looks like stars it's a galaxy light but uh on the ceiling and that and then the lights that you can kind of see back here i when i'm trying to stop working i light i put on that light i put these lights i literally change the lighting in my room and in the areas where i'm going to be trying to wind down just to literally signal to my brain okay we're not working anymore we're we're winding down so even things like that if you have a lamp and you can put a different color light bulb or something just to kind of trigger that it helps. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 
Um, so the next one says, set your room to an appropriate temperature. Most people sleep better when it's cool. Others sleep better at a neutral room, uh, temperature. Find what works best for you. I love sleeping in the cold. <laughs> oh, um, um, sleep tip, wearing socks and having either a colder environment or like turning the fan on, um, that helps. So yeah, this thing said most people sleep best around 67, um, but socks and having it cold and wearing socks has been proven in a lot of sleep studies to improve quality of sleep, random thing. Nice. Yeah, I, I think um, I have to sleep with the fan on, but I think it's it's kind of like the noise too that helps me. Like this talks about um, having a white noise machine, but that helps me. If it's too quiet, I, for some reason, I have a hard yeah, time. Yeah, I need the noise too. And I tried the app, but the app for some reason makes me more up instead of relaxing me. I need the fan noise. Yes. Okay, the next one is make the room as dark as possible to maximize melatonin production, cover your windows and turn your phone face down. Use a motion sensitive or dim light to illuminate mid sleep bathroom trips. So turn off all the lights. Um, all right, so the next one, let's see, what does it say? Um, preparing for a good night's sleep. As odd as it sounds, your path to high quality sleep starts in the morning. Um, so let's just go over a few of these. Um, I really truly believe that setting a routine, like a morning routine and a night routine is, is just going to help you get better sleep, especially if you're struggling with it and you don't know where to start, you know, writing down a routine and trying to practice that little by little, you'll get better each day. So, um, some of these say wake at the right time. You'll feel better and more alert if you wake from a light sleep stage. If you feel groggy, consider a device or app that senses sleep cycles and rouses you at an optimal point. Um, so I don't have anything like this, but for me, it's just getting like the seven hours of sleep. It's easier to wake up. I use sleep cycle. Um, it is, sorry, it was echoing so bad. Uh, it You can put it down on your your table next to, your, next to you or whatever, and it'll give you a 30 minute you can set a 30 minute window of when you need to wake up and it'll actually like pick the best time to wake you. So if I need to wake up at 10 AM, I would set the um, 10 AM. Who said that? 7, 6 AM. If I need to wake up at 6 AM. Hey, a lot of times y'all know, cause you get the message, my messages at midnight. I'm up late working <laughs> in my defense. Um, if you need to work, wake up at seven, you'd set your alarm and it'll for a 30 minute window of 6:30 to seven and it'll pick the best time based on your REM, sl REM sleep and cycle. And that, that um, specific uh, feature is free. They do have a paid version that, that has more sleep statistics, but it's called Sleep Cycle. That's the one I use. Nice. That's a, it's just an app on your phone? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yep, I'll put that in the, the chat too. Yeah. Okay, next one is Be Awakened by Light. This naturally raises cortisol, which is a good thing in the morning. The slow rise helps you feel alert and relaxed. That one's a little iffy because if we get up before the sun, there's nothing we can do about that, but. There's, a, there's an alarm clock for that. They're, they actually make alarm clocks that mimic sunrise and they gradually get brighter. So I know my sister wow. uses one of those. That's amazing. I, I have one of those, it's really cool. Cool, because not only does it it start turning on gradually before you want it to wake up, and then I have it set. You can have it set to um, like noise machine type of noises, or you can or sounds, or you can have it set to a radio station. So I have mine set to this classical radio station, but it's really cool. Cool, that's amazing. I gotta look into that. I'm learning new things here. I didn't know they had those. <laughs> Okay, the next one um, is get moving right away. Movement seems to speed the waking process, whereas hitting snooze increases sleep inertia. When it's time to wake up, sit up and put your feet on the floor. So type one, if you're someone who presses the snooze, type two, if you're somebody who gets up as soon as the alarm goes off. And I want to expand on that. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say I'm both. That's why I have to put my phone in the kitchen. <laughs> so that I have to get up out of bed and walk through my cold house to go <laughs> get out of bed. Otherwise I'm snoozing. Nice. Yes, I understand. For me, I used to be number one, but since having my son, number two, as soon as he gets up, I'm, I'm up. <laughs> so um, uh, this, this snooze thing there, I've read a lot of research on this. 
it is like the hitting snooze is one of the worst things you can do when you wake up because you literally are breaking a promise to yourself first thing in the morning. Mm. And there are so many effects that that has that you don't even realize, but like subliminal messages that sends to you. It's like the first part of your day, you're letting yourself down because instead of waking up when you're supposed to, you're already choosing to start off later and stressed. Um, and then another thing I just want to add is, uh, the best thing you can do when you wake up is chug water because your body gets significantly dehydrated when you sleep. So I think 35 ounces is the recommended amount, but if you can wake up and chug 35 ounces of water, you will feel significantly better and your energy levels will feel a lot better too. And that's before food, before coffee, just, I always try to have a, a water bottle next to like my alarm clock or on the counter ready to go that has 30 ounces. So I can just chug it as soon as I'm up. That's nice. Okay. Um, let's see. Find the sun or a light therapy box. Uh, light exposure sets your daily melatonin and sleep hormone rhythm. This increases wakefulness during the day and helps your body gear down at bedtime. So we kind of just went over that one. Um, be careful of alcohol and caffeine. Consuming caffeine after 2 p.m. and or having uh, more than one to two drinks in the evening can interfere with deep sleep. Um, so fun fact about alcohol, like if you are, um, getting intoxicated before you go to sleep, your body is unable to go through the full REM cycle. So you're no matter how long you sleep, even if it's 10 hours afterwards, you're going to wake up and feel like you got no sleep. Um, yeah, which I can attest to for sure. <laughs> Um, so exercise is next one. Regular exercise helps normalize your body's 24 hour clock, regulate your fight or flight system and optimize your hormone levels. However, be careful with very intense exercise later in the evening. It may, it may be harder to fall asleep. And then we have, did you want to say something, Anna? It really, that, I just want to say it depends on the person because yeah. there's sometimes where my like mind is racing and working out is almost like a form of meditation because when I work out, it's like my brain is kind of not focusing on life or work. So that would really be a personal preference for, for everyone. But no, if you notice that you're having trouble falling asleep, pay attention to what times you're working out and try to see if there is a pattern between like, okay, I, I have trouble falling asleep on these days and I'm working out late on these days. Definitely. Yeah, I agree completely. That one's really based off of like your personal um, relationship, I guess, with exercise. Okay, so the next one is eat a small to medium dinner. Too much food can make it harder to fall asleep. A blend of minimally uh, processed proteins, carbs, and fats can help you keep you satisfied until morning. Plus having some slow digesting carbs can make you feel sleepy. So um, y'all should all have a balanced dinner meal in your meal plan, which is uh, helpful to helping you fall asleep because if you've ever gone to sleep hungry, it's not fun. <laughs> and, and you know, that can kind of keep you from sleeping because you're thinking about how hungry you are. Um, so eat a balanced meal before bed, limit fluids, drinking too much liquid shortly before bed can make, uh, can result in frequent waking for bathroom breaks. So like Anna was saying, like chug water in the morning, like, um, what I try to tell all my clients is to get your water intake, like, like start drinking it early in the morning and throughout your day. And then, you know, as the evening time, if you've gotten most of your water and you can kind of slow it down that way you can, um, release all the excess water that you have in your system and then you'll you'll be ready for bed and you won't have to get up as much during the night um, and then this next one is clear your mind whatever thoughts are in your head get them out and onto paper this preps you for genuine relaxation and this is so important and I know you've talked about it before you call it the brain dump right yep yeah so basically you just um like if if this helps also with anxiety so like if you're feeling overwhelmed with the next day or even with what happened during your day and it's really hard for you to unwind and you just keep thinking about things over and over, get out a notebook, write down um, the top three things that you wanna accomplish the next day. And then anything else that's on your mind, just dump it out on the paper. So that way you, you're not, it's not in your head anymore, but you're physically writing it out. It's there and it's just, it's out, feels better. Um, also, so if, if anyone wants to add it again with meditation, with brain dumps, any of the strategies that we're using today, if you want to try these and you want us to include them into your program, 
um, make sure to message me and let me know because I can assign habits to y'all. We can assign habits to y'all um, that, so you actually have something to check off. So it'll, and that helps too, cause it's like a, you'll be able to see like your little winning streak and, you know, actually pay attention to if it's helping or not. Yeah, yeah, completely. Um, okay, the next one is go to bed. <laughs> So sticking to a reasonable bedtime teaches your body when to release calming hormones to help you fall asleep. Tip, don't wait until midnight. Every hour of sleep before 12 a.m. is worth two hours after. So stick to a bedtime, stick to a, a routine to where you can get into bed at a certain time. And then again, just shut off your phone. And then at that time, be like, I'm going to bed. I have to do it. It's a commitment I made to myself. And then the last one is sleep at least seven hours. Most people need seven to nine hours of sleep per night. If you're getting far less now, that's okay. Just work your way up slowly. Even adding 30 minutes can make a big difference. Yeah, so one thing I kind of wanted to add too to this is just that um, if you're having trouble sleeping the whole seven hours, um, try getting up like 15 minutes earlier in the morning than what you're used to. And I say 15 because it's a good starting point. Like, it's not like I'm gonna wake up at 5 a.m., which is like two hours more than what I normally wake up. That's gonna be overwhelming and it's it's unsustainable and you probably won't be able to do it. But if you do like, you know what, I'm going to wake up 15 minutes before it really does make um, a huge difference whenever you go to sleep at night, because you just, you get more done it. And then you can like work your way up. If you kind of want to start getting up at an even earlier time to get stuff done in the morning, then you can like, you know, week one or week two, you know, 15 minutes earlier, see how many days you do it, check it off. And then if you're doing good then stretch it back another five minutes, you know, a little bit goes a long way, but that's how you create those habits and uh, make your sleep a little better. So how do I um, stop share? There we go. Okay. Yay. So again, I guess if everybody um, wants to type in one strategy that they want to incorporate this week, um, we had like the meditation, we had the brain dump. Go ahead, Anna. Sorry, I was gonna ask, wait on that and have everyone, if you want to, we would actually, we're gonna post, or Sarah's gonna post that little PDF that she reviewed today in the, the group chat. And I want everyone to post their, uh, you know, what they're going to try from the strategies we talked about today in the group chat, because I, we've, we've done a lot of like six week challenges and the support in the group chats is always so amazing. And then in our like other client group chats, it's like, we don't talk that much. so. Um, this is just a way for us to try to keep each other accountable and have that like family vibe here. So, yes, definitely. Perfect. Um, does anybody else have any questions or want to say anything or add anything? 